Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and uh, today we're uh, we're not talking about computers. Um, I thought we'd have a look at something else that I uh, have an interest in, and that's uh, these things here. These are um, old valve uh, radios. Any old valve technology I'm interested in, actually. I uh, collect old valve radios, record players, TVs, amplifiers. Uh, if it was made. Um, Basically, if it was uh, made in the 50s or 60s, um, I love it. I love tinkering with these old things. And uh, they're, uh, they're, they're great fun to mess with. Uh, you've got to be careful. Um, these things have got lethal voltages inside them. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can do yourself some serious injury with them. But saying that, um, I've... I've had a few shocks in my life, but I've never had anything in them particularly nasty. And it's uh, just... I've actually had more shocks from um, computer equipment and modern equipment than um, I've ever had from stuff like this because you have to have some respect for them. But anyway, that's not my whole uh, reason I'm doing this video. What I'm going to do the video about is uh, this unit here. Now what this is, is um, it's, there's various different names for this. Um, I like to call it, it's a series lamp limiter. Um, I've heard them known as dim bulbs, uh, a dim bulb device. I've even heard them uh, referred to as a poor man's variac, which um, is a complete misdemeanor. They're nothing to do with a variac. Um, what this is, it's a current limiting device. Um, and what it's useful for is initial power-up, really, of um, old equipment. It has some other uses which I won't go into in this video. Uh, what we're talking about um, in this video is using a um, series lamp limiter like this um, for initial power up of um, old equipment. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be vintage valve equipment like this. Any old transistorized equipment, basically anything that you've just got in, um, you um, aren't 100% sure about it, you want to um, try powering it up, um, this is the thing to use really. Now, I've seen people say, oh well I stick it at the bottom of the garden on a long extension lead and um, I make sure I'm safe that way. Yeah, you're safe that way, but um, if there's a short in that piece of equipment or if there's a fault in that piece of equipment um, you're going to you might blow your circuit breaker or something like that which is just an inconvenience uh, you risk doing damage to the equipment it could be something that's really simple to fix and just putting mains straight up it um, you could damage a piece of a, a damage a component in there that you can't replace especially if you've got like a fault in a tra in one of the mains transformers um, what this does is it puts a lamp, this is an old style, I'll just get that um, a bit close to the camera, this is an old style incandescent light bulb, 100 watts, uh, with a proper tungsten filament in it. You can just about get away with the, uh, I don't know if I've got one round here or not, I've got one down there, I don't think I've got one there, ah yes here we are. Uh, you can just about get away with this type, which are the modern so-called energy saving um, halogen equivalents, but I don't like using these. Uh, really, you want an old-fashioned light bulb like that. And you have to pick the light bulb to really to um, match the piece of equipment that you use, and you wouldn't use a 100 watt light bulb if you was just um, powering up, say, um, a 1970s transistor um, mains radio um, because um, that uses a lot, that um, the current draw of that is going to be too much for um, the piece of equipment and the piece of equipment will hardly power up you'd need like a 40 watt light bulb for that but for old valve equipment like this um, this is just a it's a Ferranti um, two-band like little table radio. It's what was described as a bedside radio from the late 1950s. And it probably pulls about 60 watts worth of power. Um, probably not even that. It doesn't pull a huge amount. But a 100 watt light bulb's about what you'd use on a um, piece of vintage valve equipment like this. If it was a big, uh, like a big guitar amplifier or something, you'd need bigger than a 100 watt light bulb. If you was working on like an old colour valve TV, um, you'd probably need like a 200 watt light bulb 
or you could run two um you could run two um, in parallel to be honest to do that but yeah um little valve radio like that 100 watt light bulbs what you want and um, basically as i was saying it acts as a current this is a current limiting device so this radio has been restored um it's one that i restored a few years ago but say this i just bought that radio from a car boot sale well the first thing i wouldn't do is plug it straight in here the first thing i'd do is um open it up and see if there's anything visible obvious that's failing and um correct that but when i first come to actually apply mains to it i would always use this because what this does i'll um, i'll demonstrate this now i know i've got this radio i think i've got it tuned to a sports channel or something so we shouldn't get in trouble with um, royalties or anything um this is plugged in at the moment this switch here is in the in position this is why it's marked in and out which means that that bulb now is in circuit with the radio it's in series with the um, live going into the radio now what we should see is when I switch the radio on the bulb should start glowing ever so dimly because the, the um, radio is taking current but it's taking current through the bulb now because it's not pulling much current the bulb will just glow nice and dim and the radio will probably actually fire up and work it's the bulbs dropping a bit of voltage probably about 20 volts or so so the radio won't perform as it should but that's not what this test is about this test is about making sure there's no shorts or anything in here which is going to either cause a bang and um, shock you not electrically shock you but um, physically shock you or um, say uh, one of the valves has um, gone here to cathode shark now that will put a strain on the rectifier valve now that usually would make the rectifier valve flash over and um, damage the rectifier valve with this in circuit that extra current draw you've got there will just make the light bulb glow brighter and say the um, rectifier valve in this was failing and starting to flash over which could in theory if it was to um, short out damage the smoothing capacitors in here because they don't like AC on them they're um, to filter AC out, you don't want to put AC straight onto them. Um, again, the bulb will start flashing and flickering, and you know that you've got a fault. Um, as well, these these have a um, filter capacitor across the mains, um, and in these, it's an old wax paper capacitor. Uh, when they were original, now after 50, 60 years, them capacitors go off like firecrackers. Now, if you're sensible, you will have cut that out of circuit already, but I know some people don't, they want to see what happens. If you plug it in this and that component's failing, the bulb will light, it'll flicker, it'll flash, you know there's something wrong, and you can quickly switch off again. I will just um, demonstrate this now anyway. So what we do, we'll switch the radio on. Now, just bear in mind, it will take a couple of seconds to warm up. This is a valve radio, they take a minute or two just to warm up. And we've got the lamp in circuit. Now let me just switch my uh, my bench light out so perhaps you can see this a bit better. I don't know if you're going to see this at all now. Let me uh, see if I can get some more light on. Just bear with me. That's better. Right, you should be able to see something now. Now as you can hear the radio has come up. And as you can see... Five Life Sports with Eleanor Aldroyd. The lamp is just, I'll just turn that down a bit, but you can see the radio's working. And as you can see, the lamp is just barely glowing. That means that there's nothing, I mean, I know there's nothing wrong with this radio. But if that radio had um, developed a fault and there was a short circuit inside it, what would happen is that lamp, instead of glowing just dimly like that, would flash on bright. It would light up like a normal light bulb, or it would flicker. So you know that there's something shorting out in the radio and you can easily then just kill the power. Now, at its simplest, this, if you ignore that switch there, because that's something extra really. <clears throat> at its simplest, what this circuit is, let me just put my uh, bench light back on. Ooh, excuse that. What we've got is we imagine that socket there, we'll draw it in. So we've got a live conductor, we've got an earth conductor and we've got a neutral conductor so we've got neutral there we've got earth up there and we've got live there that is that socket 
what we've got, we've got a plug here, so we've got earth again, we've got a neutral there, we've got a live there, so that, you've got a fuse obviously in there, that's inside your um, plug, so that's your live up there, that's your neutral, that's your earth. And how this circuit works is your neutral, your earth obviously is connected to your earth, your neutral is just connected to your neutral like that, but your live comes out your live, it comes through that lamp, so you've got your lamp there with its filament, I think that's the circuit, the symbol for a lamp, and then it goes to the live pin. So basically, when the radio is drawing current, it has to draw current through the bulb. If that starts drawing too much current because there's a short circuit or there's a fault in it, the bulb will start glowing brighter and brighter and limit the current. That's why it's called a current limiting device. It will limit the current going into um, the device which is faulty and prevent any further damage. As well as preventing any damage, it also gives you a visual indication there's something wrong because the uh, bulb will flash up bright. So um, the only difference between what I have here and that circuit is I've added... Because I do this a lot, I mean, this is not something I'd recommend if you're just beginning with this. Just stick with that. Um, you could knock this up. I mean, these parts are second hand. Um, I was an electrician um, back, in, um, back in the past. Um, I don't work on um, commercial electrical um, installation now, but uh, these are things I've just gathered up over time. Um, even going to somewhere like B&Q, you could pick this lot up for about a tenner. Like I say, you don't need the switch um, if you're just building the simple one. All you need is a uh, single socket with a um, switch on it and a uh, lamp holder. And, um, yeah, it's something that I would well, well recommend anyone that's into um, some of this. I know a few people that are um, watch my videos and um, I speak with on Facebook are into this old um, vintage valve stuff as well. And... I highly, highly recommend um, knocking something like this up just for your own peace of mind and your own safety, really. Um, I think I've made that fairly um, explanatory. I, all the usual disclaimers, you know, um, if you don't know what you're doing, um, don't blame me if you uh, kill yourself. Um, I'm trying to do this as um, a bit of information for people, really, because um, I know a few people that are... Um, like messing with this old stuff but I don't think they uh, really quite appreciate um, some of the dangers involved and uh, something like this is really a first step to uh, really getting into it so um, I think I'll leave it at that anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed that and if uh, you want me to go any more into any of the um, old vintage valve stuff um, if you leave me a comment below um, I'd happy be happy to do some more videos on it or uh, explain things a little bit further I can even explain how you can use this for some other things. Um, you can use um, this device in conjunction with a bridge rectifier and a variac for um, reforming old capacitors. Because um, the old capacitors that are used in this piece of equipment like this, when they've sat for 30, 40, 50 years unused, if you just put uh, start using them straight away, there's a good chance um, they'll go bang. Uh, they don't like it. They need to go through a, pro a process called reforming. Um, you can use a Variac, one of these, and a bridge rectifier to do that. Um, again, it's something I would um, stick a uh, video up if anyone's interested in. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So, um, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye.